And good evening! Welcome to yet another fantastic stream that we're going to have today. Uh, today we are going to dive back into the world of my favorite game of all time. Uh, by no, It's not even a contest. Final Fantasy IV is absolutely my favorite game. And uh, I have recently, like within the past couple of months, found this thing called Free Enterprise, which basically randomizes Final Fantasy IV, much like we have randomized Legend of Zelda, uh, Link to the Past, and uh, Super Metroid. So, uh, and welcome, Kaoru. Uh, thank you for making it. Really appreciate it. Uh, appreciate everyone stopping by. And uh, we are going to get right into it. I uh, just finished rolling this seed, I guess is the, what the cool kids call it. Basically, where you, take, where you go into the options and you set which options you want for the randomization and then uh, just let it go. So, also while we're doing this, uh, I do a tracker kind of thing, and I'm going to pull that up now. So that way that can also be part of this whole thing. Maybe. Maybe not. I guess i got to fix it. You know, these things happen. Uh, let's see here. La, 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 la. Well, huh, huh, apparently the tracker is not something that I can put on the screen. That's weird. All right, let's, let's figure this out here. No, discard the changes. There we go. There it is. And now you see some of the behind-the-scenes stuff, because it's actually just a web page that comes up. And uh, that's how we do it. So, uh, here we go. Now, this is just a casual thing. A lot of people do s speed runs of this. There are races, there are tournaments, there are leagues for Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise, which is absolutely amazing. And perhaps one day, I will also be good enough to be able to, uh, to do that. But uh, today is not that day, so we're just going to have fun with this one. As I uh, pull it up here, I have no clue what I'm going to get. It could be anything. I could get just some awful, awful luck with this, and that's probably what happens. I will say this. Um, there is a special option in the, uh, in the randomizer that allows you to basically downgrade Final Fantasy IV from 16-bit to 8-bit. So I figured, eh... What the heck? Let's go ahead and do that. So here it is. This is the 8-bit version of a 16-bit game because, of course, that makes sense. And looks like Cecil is going to be our starting character. So that's uh, that's normal. And I do want to do a couple of things here. Uh, I want I actually do want encounters on because I need to get experience and and level up and stuff. Uh, that's all fine. We're going to turn the flash stuff off, so that way if anyone has photosensitivity, they will not be bothered by uh, by any flashing things that would be in the normal game. That was a very good thing that the developers of Free Enterprise did to, uh, to make it more accessible to people, and I really applaud that. So let's see who we start off with. We've got Cecil, and Cecil is going to be teamed up with Sid, and the magical blinky... Light of Doom is going to give us the Spoon! Okay, so the Spoon uh, is basically a, a hidden item, really, in the what we call the vanilla game, the original game, that our ninja character, Edge, can do what's called dart, which is basically throwing any pointy weapon that is in your inventory at an enemy. And it has an attack power of 255, which is the absolute maximum. Uh, and yes, uh, Karu has uh, has mentioned something very important, that uh, the Spooning Bard in the randomization version of this can be, you can give the option to have him equip the spoon, which kind of makes him a killing machine. So I'm kind of hoping that we will get an Edward here very soon, but let me go ahead and update the tracker there. We've got Cecil, we've got Sid... We've got the spoon, and we are ready to go. 
Where do we go first? Well, I usually start right here in town. Everything is random in here. The stuff that is normally hidden in pots like this is random, so I think normally that's a just a potion, like a cure potion. So now we get a heal potion. Not bad. Especially because right now we have no white mages in the party. So the only way that we can uh, that we can heal ourselves is with items, like the antidote to cure poison. Uh, and that's also the only way we have of casting magic, so Thor's Rage might actually be something good to pick up, you know, once we get some money. Right now we have none. Uh, the SLPH here, that's a summon spell for our summoner, Rydia. If we find Rydia to go into the party, that will be useful. Dragoon Armor, that's the best armor for Cain, but Sid can also wear it, and it's a lot better than prisoner clothing. Watch this. His defense is going to jump from 13 to 35, almost uh, almost tripling his defense. As we continue to raid the town of Baron for random stuff. Bandana, that's uh, also going to be good for Sid because he basically starts with nothing. So anything we can do to boost his stats is good. This is Rosa's mom. Rosa is uh, is Cecil's bay. And uh, in the randomization, Rose's mom basically tells you where some of the really important items or key items are that are scattered throughout the world. Let's see what else. 490 gil. That's good. Fire armor. And the drain spear. So some good stuff for Kane. Now we just need to find Kane. He is hidden somewhere in the world. Also something that's going to be pretty important to do very quickly is get Cecil out of the Dark Knight and get him into Paladin. So I, one of the very first things we're going to do is do that uh, that quest. So I've got some gill now. 2,500 gill. So there are no, there are no cure potions, which means I am really going to need to be careful. Because I have no way of healing unless I just go back to a town and go to an inn, basically, and do that. FYI, game audio is low. Well, we can fix that. There we go. Hopefully that's a little bit better. Uh, you know, there actually may be, like, a power gauntlet in here. I don't think there is, but there is something similar. I think it's the Zeus gauntlet or something like that. That is basically the power glove. Okay. Hopefully that's a little bit better. So, normally right now what I would do is I would go get some experience. And I think what I'm going to do is actually build up my party. So, if you notice here in, in Free Enterprise, you get this airship first off. You don't normally get that until about a third of the way through your journey. But uh, we're going to get the airship first off so we can go anywhere on the overworld that we want. So I'm going to go here to the town of Mysidia. And this is normally where you would meet a white mage and a black mage, Palam and Porum, who are precocious little kids who will help guide you up Mount Ordeals in your quest to become a paladin. Well, let's see who we actually get. Well, we get one of the twins. And we get... Edge, our ninja! So if I really wanted to, I could dart that spoon and get some massive damage. But that's a one-time thing, and it's really going to be better is that if I find Edward, our bard, who can equip the spoon, is to give it to him. The good thing, too, is that Edge is a character that you normally get pretty late in the game. So he's already pretty powerful. He's already got almost 800 hit points. Uh, Sid is also, like, halfway through the game, so he's got about 800 hit points. Um, and I don't think there's, <coughs> excuse me, there's really anything that we can give him right now to make him any better. But the good thing is is that we have Porum, who is a white mage. So Porum... I don't think that we have anything for her. Yeah, the prisoner clothing is not is a downgrade for her. But that way we have some healing. And I always like to check the shops and see what there is to see. Uh, nothing really cool. Samurai arrows are good, but we need, also need a bow for that. And uh, no one comes with a bow except for Rosa. And let's see what kind of items we have. 
Oh, cure potions. Those are good. Let's get a couple of those. Should probably get some life potions too. Ten of those, just in case. Because, one, Porum does not know any life spells right off the bat. She'll, I, I think that's one of the first spells she learns though, so that'll be good. But now we're gonna try, I think we can go up the mountain, get Cecil into a paladin, and then really, really get this started. And we start off with a battle. Here's the downside to going to Mount Ordeals first, is that Cecil being a dark knight uses the power of darkness and, and basically evil and stuff to fight. And all of the monsters on Mount Ordeals, almost all of them, are strong against darkness because they're undead. So there's not going to be much that can be done. However, Palum can cast Cure on some of the monsters and actually damage them. Like so. Not much. And I gotta be careful because she is really super weak. Meanwhile, Edge is just like taking care of business. And we're gonna need to use one of those cure potions right away. Yeah, Cecil only did like, what, 12 damage then? Get Porn back on her feet. In fact, probably should just do a Cure Potion there. Or a Cure Spell, rather. There we go. She's back up to full strength. Edge is getting zapped. Cecil, Cecil gained two levels! Forum gained a level, and now has the Life Spell, so yay for that. So let me also, real quick, I keep forgetting, I gotta update the tracker. I don't normally track when I'm just playing on my own. I should probably start doing that. That's not the right one. That's the right one. And then we got Edge. So now that we have that all set up, uh, let's keep going. Oh, there's some chests there. Let's see what's in those. Oh, that's a lot. Uh, most of these guys are weak against fire, so I'll probably do that. Edge comes with a ninja version of fire that will be useful. Except for those spirits, because they are... They actually get healed by fire spells, because they are flames, I guess. Kind of makes sense. And Edge will probably take out that one all on his own. Yep. Cool beans. We're making progress. Yes, this is the 8-bit mode. It, yeah, it, that's why it looks a lot more like uh, Final Fantasy 1. Learned armor. And Cure 2. Cura, if uh, you're more familiar with the modern nomenclature of magic in the Final Fantasy universe. Oh, some more dollars. Dollars are always nice. Oh. Okay, so fire is going to be completely ineffective here. Cecil is getting burned. Like, a lot. All four of those went towards Cecil. That is... That is not cool. So Porum's going to have to do her thing. Ah, that was... That was nice. It healed exactly the number of max HP that Cecil has. And Porum's getting another level. And we move on. We will meet another character up here. Up ahead, let's see who we get. Ah, we got the other one! We got Palum, the Black Mage! So that's good. I now have a pretty well-rounded party. 
it would help if I went to the right window to, to make him light up. There we go, now he's lit up. Oh, back attack, that's not good. Oh, that's really not good. Get that poor kid in the back row so he dies. Just to conserve on MP, we're gonna do that. Because I want him alive so that he can actually get some experience from this fight. Cecil has been cursed, which means he, uh... It reduces basically all of your stats. That's a lot of experience, too. So Cecil's gonna get two levels, Sid's gonna get a level, Form's gonna get another level, learn Mute, Palum's gonna get two levels and learn all, I think, all the level two spells? Nope, Ice and Fire. Lazara and Fira. Hey, the Great Bow! So I can go back and get some Samurai Arrows and probably give those to Porum. The other good thing about having both the twins in the party is they can do something called Twin Cast, which is a kind of overpowered magic spell, but especially for large groups of enemies, it works really well. demonstrate it here. Oh, no! Oh, that sucks! Hit for exactly the right amount of damage to put poor Palum down. There's his level 2 lightning and stop, which is kind of a useless spell. Okay, I have nothing that uh, will heal me as far as like a cabin or a tent or something, so we're going to uh, skip the. Uh, skip that, and oh boy, I'm low on MP too. Debating on whether or not I really want to go through this, because there are three boss battles coming up. I think I may actually want to go back down the mountain. Heal up and try again. And run from a lot of these battles. said, run from these battles. This chocobo forest. One, there's a hidden item there with 30 gil. And then the white chocobo actually restores all of your party's MP. So that will be useful once everyone is kind of healed up here a little bit. I think everyone, yeah, everyone's at max HP now, so. 
MP, so now we're back at full strength. Get out of the way, bird. Oh, for the love of criminy. Oh my gosh! Can we stop with... Okay. I'm gonna save the game. Alright, take two, going up the mountain. Uh, right now it's just a, just a random casual run. I, eventually I will start doing this for speed, but today is not that day because... I'm, I'm good at the game, but I don't quite have all the, uh, all, I guess, all the strategy down for being able to do it just absolutely blindingly fast. Yeah, I've started to practice a little bit with it. My biggest problem is that, especially with Final Fantasy IV, my, my intent is to go fast, but then I always try to go look for everything. And that's kind of flying in the face of wanting to do the game fast. Because I just want to see, you know, am I going to find the, you know, the coolest item that I can find? Alright, here we go. Actually, I am going to use this and save, just in case we get completely destroyed. I'm losing all my money by running, but... <laughs> ah, the Octo Mammoth! You're gonna see... You just kinda hanging out in the void there. This guy is weak against darkness, so Cecil is gonna be able to do some good damage, and also is weak against lightning. But first I wanna do the... That's Comet, that is a weaker version of Meteor, which is the most powerful attack magic in the game. We're already doing pretty well. Just to keep, uh, keep our buddy Palum safe. There we go! That was a fairly simple fight. That's an important spell to learn. BRSK is short for Berserk. Basically, it will make any character just physically attack with increased attack power, but you lose control over them, so all they will do is physically attack. But that can be useful. I happen to know that the next fight is going to be a back attack, so I'm going to go ahead and switch my party over. And let's see who we're fighting. A water hag. A very hard hitting water hag. Wow. This is normally a scripted fight that Edward, our cowardly bard, would fight. Edward is not here, though, so, uh, okay. Believe in yourself, and be strong. Arg! And it's dead.
Final Fantasy IV did a lot of stuff that was really kind of innovative at the time. Like, for example, scripted battles. Uh, as far as I know, there was only one other time that scripted battles were used before this. And Final Fantasy IV has a good number of them. Need to switch our party back over. Because we're gonna get, going to get into another boss battle here inside this little room of mysteriousness. And this is where our good buddy Cecil is going to bid farewell to his bloodstained past. And we get the Magma Key, which opens up a whole new world map for us. More importantly, that happens. And... Oh, we fight these dolls. Okay. So I'm hoping we have a couple of... Oh wow, Cecil's armor is dark. Okay, that's what I was hoping would happen. Normally this is another scripted battle, but uh, since all the bosses are randomized, we could get anything. So as a result of going through three bosses in a row, Cecil becomes Paladin. Any Tellas, which are uh, basically sages or old dudes who know all the magic, now remember that they know all the magic. They also learn Meteo or Meteor, which is that super powerful attack magic that I was talking about before. So, time to go back down the mountain. And this time I am going to do some fights because Cecil is not going to be weak against these guys anymore for one, and two, he's back to level one, so we need to get him boosted up a little bit. Nope, just that guy. As you can see, he just took almost a hundred damage from one physical attack. And he does not start out with a sword, because that sword that he normally gets at the top of the mountain is a key item, so that means it's somewhere. We have no clue where. Fire will not work, but ice should. Yeah, it works a little bit. Edge will that clean up, and we will move on. Cecil gained 14 levels all at once. So he's going to learn some magic spells. Sight, Peep, Cura. Edge gets a new spell. Thorum gets a new spell. It's an important spell. Heal. Also known as Essena in the uh, later games. Heals any status ailment except for death. I'm going to run from that because... Uh, we were backwards. Okay. Alright, Edge, do your magic ninja thing. Technically, Cecil could cast Cure 2 on all these guys and hurt them. So just in case this doesn't work, although it should, yeah, there we go. So Cecil will get another two levels. Palom gets a level, learns Virus, which is another, another pretty good spell. Nice. Got cured to death.
The virus sound effect scared me as a child. I'll, uh, I'll demonstrate it when we get into another battle here. Let me get over to Palom. Hi, Willow! Oh, wow. Yeah, that that sound effect scared me as a kid. I mean, it does it now, of course, but... I was always afraid to use... Uh, to use Virus when I was playing through this originally. Now it's one of the more effective spells for damaging. Not only does it do a lot of damage initially, it does what's called an uh, HP sap, which will slowly drain a target's HP until it reaches... until for like a few turns, or if it hits zero. But it's just as powerful as some of the level 2 or level 3 elemental spells. And it only costs 20 MP, whereas like all the level 3 elemental spells cost 30, and sometimes they'll be super effective, sometimes they will be not as effective, to use a uh, Pokemon language. Alright, so. We're out of the mountain, which is good. We've got the magma key, so we'll light that up. And who did we fight while we were there? We fought the dolls, so they're done. Who else did we fight? Why do I just not remember this? We fought the Octo Mammoth. So that's that thing, I think. Yeah, Octo Mammoth. And then the other one was the Water Hag. So those three are done. Alright, let's go back to our Chocobo Forest, let's heal up, and then we will move on. Willow is being a little feisty today. Why do you keep... Ah, that's why. Let's see. Nah, it's close enough. Whoops! Go back. Well, that's not the right chocobo. Try us again. There we go! And just in case I run into seven random encounters between here and the airship. Okay. So we've got a full party, they're somewhat strong. I mean, for this early stage in the game, they're somewhat strong. Cecil needs some good equipment, because if we take a look, he got nothing. That's one reason why he's taking so much damage. Um, let's go up here. Normally you can't visit this town to actually buy stuff until much later in the game. But we can go now. Plus, they have a lot of hidden stuff in this village, so... Over here, we've got the Earth Hammer. And the Change Rod. Those can both be useful. It's gonna bump Sid up. As you... S Here's the uh, comparison. The Wooden Hammer has 45 attack, and the Earth Hammer has 65 attack, so that bumps him up by 20 points. And then Palom will take his regular old rod, give it a Change Rod, that bumps his attack up a little bit. Not that mages really attack all that much, but it's there just in case. Leviathan, good spell for Rydia if we find her. Hidden stuff, ice armor, star veil, samurai gauntlet. Uh, I think that's an upgrade for Edge. A little bit of an upgrade. And then... Oh, I actually had... <laughs> I actually had some decent armor for, for Cecil. 
Let's see, the ice armor is 17 defense. That's 15 defense, so we want the 17 defense. We can give that to him from edge. So that gives him a little bit of defense, which is good. Key items, bosses, characters, and also stuff in shops. So I could go to, to a shop and there normally would be like, you know, your usual cure potion, heal potion, tent, phoenix down. And in this case, it could be anything. So if I go in here, like there's a really powerful sword. I have nowhere near enough money for it. There's the dragoon spear, that's Kane's best weapon. Um, I have a silver knife, which is strong against spirits. There's one of the best uh, staves for your white mage. So, yeah, usually this... Uh, spells and moves are the same in this particular randomization. There is another randomizer out there that actually does shuffle the abilities between characters. So you could have a Cecil that knows karate... You could have Sid, who's an engineer, be your strongest uh, white magic caster in the whole game. And that's about all that's in this town, so... That one's fun. I think one time I'll do that one. It's called uh, Final Fantasy IV The Lunarian Shuffle. The cool thing about Lunarian Shuffle is that it also gives you the option to play as Golbez. Uh, which is normally not a playable character. Let's check what's in these shops. If it's anything good. Oh, that's one of the best swords for Edge. I almost have enough to give that to Cecil as a upgraded weapon. I'm just a little short. In fact, I could probably sell something. I could sell a lot of things, actually. Yeah, that's not worth it. Uh, some of these I want to hang on to just in case I find these particular characters, but... What? Oh, well, I, I shouldn't buy ten dwarven axes. No, it's not a sprite swap. It's actually... Um, they have done some custom programming to give Golbez a moveset. And basically, they treat Golbez as a combination between Dark Knight and Black Mage. So he knows all the black magic spells, plus he can do um, the Dark Wave move, which is a move that was not normally in... It wasn't in the U.S. Final Fantasy II. It was in the original FF4, but it got dummied out, basically. So that's going to bump Cecil up to a respectable... 72 attack. And that will also be good for Cecil. Since he right now is not wearing anything on his head. That'll bump him up a bit. The... The... The hacking community around FF4 has been absolutely amazing. Something cool just happened. In fact, Matsuri Dream is hosting, and I thank you for that. Well, there's Kane. He is sick in bed. He needs something called the Sand Ruby, which is found from the butt of an antlion. It's also one of those key items. Here in uh, in Free Enterprise, there is a tr they built in a tracker, which is amazing. So I can tell, here are all the key items I need to get. If it's in yellow, that means I haven't used it yet. If it's in white, that means I have. So the Sand Ruby is something I will have to find somewhere. And now that actually uh, is worth it because Kane is a decent character to have. These are much easier... Much easier foes. We'll just nuke them all. 
we'll microwave them. Oops! Huh. Sorry about that Matsuri Dream, uh, I just set up this thing called Nightbot and I'm still a little unsure about how it works, so... Uh, I apologize for that random moderation that I was... Yeah, I think it's a little too trigger-happy. I'll have to uh, do some more experimentation with it. Get some treasure here. Ninja robe, that's good for Edge. Because he's the only one... And wow, is that an improvement! That is a super improvement. Yeah, I will definitely play with that probably a little bit before tomorrow, which is our Dragoon Shield. Except Sid cannot use that because his hammer is a two-handed weapon. Ooh, Avenger Sword. That's a good one. Silver Hammer. Eh. I think the Avenger Sword might be... Yes, it is better. Okay, but the downside to that is that it will automatically make Cecil just go berserk. So all he will be able to do is attack. So if Palum go or if Porum goes down, I will not have a healer. Because Cecil can sometimes be a secondary healer if your primary one gets knocked out. So that's something I'll have to think about. There is Tella. So now we have six people and only five slots, so do I... Who do I... Do I want to get rid of someone? And I think the answer is no. I think we're pretty good. Tella is... The problem with Tella is that his magic points are capped at 90 for plot reasons um, in the vanilla game. So... We're gonna tell Tella to go take a hike, and he will end up in Mysidia. So in case I change my mind, I can go back and grab him. Yeah, this is a uh, kind of a special flag you can put on Free Enterprise. Apparently it was for April Fool's Day this year, uh, but it's kind of a cool thing to do. Yes, you... Yeah, get lost, but give me your shit. Sometimes I'll do that, because uh, one of the characters comes with some really good equipment. But even if I don't keep him, I will keep his stuff and give it to my uh, to my mages. Cure two potions. Get some of those. Lightning bolts are also very good, but I am poor now. So I cannot afford them. What do we got here? Better sword for Cecil again, but... I am still poor. Let me see if I can sell some stuff. Uh, let's see here. Dwarven Axe we can get rid of. That's 7,500. Silver Hammer, yeah. Fire Armor, yeah. Cecil can use the Dragoon Shield. That's, I think, better than what was at 6-3. What is the Diamond Shield? I think is not 6-3. It's 4-2. Okay. So we'll just give Cecil this Dragoon Shield that I thought he could use, but apparently he can't. So, we will sell the Dragoon Shield and get the one that he can use. I could have, but it's not worth a ton.
one. Oh, now I get it. That Avenger sword is a two-handed sword. There are only a, a very small handful of weapons in this game that are two-handed. That's why Cecil can't use the shield right now. Because he's got this big-ass sword. That he's going to wreck people with. And let's see who he's going to wreck with it. Because this is going to be another random fight. Again. Normally about halfway through the game, and right now we're meeting him at a point that is maybe a third of the way through the game. The nice thing is that Free Enterprise will actually scale the difficulty of the boss to where it is as far as, like, plot-wise through the game. So Bygen, since he's showing up earlier than normal, will be a little bit weaker than he normally is. Levels! Oh, quite a few levels, actually. Learns Toad. Normally, that is a whole big, like, gauntlet of fights that you have to go through. And I am really super loud. Let me try and fix that. That is fixing it the wrong way. That, I think, is a little bit better. Okay. And let's see what we get for our trouble. The Earth Crystal! Okay. So that opens up a new dungeon that I can go to. And a silver sword that I can sell for money. And 50 gil, which is money. Get the stuff here, thousand gil, flame, dragoon helmets. I think that's an upgrade for Cecil, yeah, a little bit. That is Yang's wife. Alright, so, Earth Crystal, we got. There's the Earth Crystal! Bygen is down! Tella is in Mesidia. Just chilling. Having the adult beverage of his choice. a cheap place to spend the night. Only a hundred gil. Oh, uh oh. Okay. Volume, how does it work? See if that's any better. to now. I think let's try let's try and use that earth crystal. We're going to go to a special dungeon called the Tower of Zot. And before we go, I'm going to check in here and see if there's any cool stuff that may be an upgrade. Yes, there is. Oh, man. Look at that. That is Cecil's best sword. The price that they are asking for is a fair price because that is 200 attack, plus his boost, his strength, his vitality, and his willpower, which is his white magic effectiveness by 15 points. That is a... That basically wrecks the game by getting that. It turns Cecil into an even bigger killing machine than he already is. Got some good swords there for Edge. I just need some more money. I don't know if I'm ever going to get 215,000 gil. But I can try and get close. Um, 
Silver sword can go away. Diamond shield can go away. That can go away. Drain is 88. Okay, flame, that can go away. That can go away. Get rid of both of those. Yeah, that's good. I can also sell one of these, because I only need one, and that's another 17.5. That's almost enough to buy Edge two of these awesome ninja blades. In fact, I'm gonna make an executive decision here. Because that's really gonna bump Edge up in attack power. And there's some more items that I can look for here. Let me see if there's anything good in here. Cure 3 potions are good, but are expensive. That's a very powerful item because it increases your max HP by 50. So, you know, if you if you find that and you have just like if you're like a gazillionaire, you could buy a bunch of those and basically max a character out on HP. But we are not to that point yet. I'm going to go in this little secret area and pick up some stuff, a rune axe, which might actually be an upgrade for um, for Sid. Take a look here. Earth Hammer has 65. Runex has 100. I am. We're, we're building our dream team here. Earth Hammer might also be worth some gill, which will be good, because I kind of want to see if I can build up to that $215,000 I'll need to get the Crystal Sword for Cecil. We got our first 18,000. We're like 5% of the way there. Alright, time to go in this castle, which has, I think, some of the most beautiful music in this game, which is filled with beautiful music. Even this 8-bit rendition is still pretty beautiful. That Prince Edward is a keeper. Sure, he sucks now, but wait until level 70. And that's not an exaggeration. So this Edward is going to give us the key to Baron. That's good. Opens up a couple of cool things. Opens up a key item, a couple of bosses. Oh, wait. Before we go, I've got the Earth Crystal. Which means I can now raid the treasury of this kingdom. There are four kingdoms in the world of Final Fantasy. So just think if, like, I went to, like, the Central Bank of Europe and said, Here, I've got this shiny. I am now going to take the entire Central Bank of Europe. It is so true. But, because in uh, the randomization they allowed Edward to equip the spoon as a weapon, it kind of makes up for it. Once I get done raiding the treasury here. That'll be good for you. You still don't have anything on your arms. But yeah, the spoon. Let me... I'll pull this up. 255 attack. It... It... It powerful. Alright. So let's go back. I don't think 
there's anything. Oh, there was something. I think that said carrot. And even more stuff. And now all I can think of is those, uh, if, if anyone remembers those rejected cartoons from a while back, the My spoon is too big! Oh no, wait! I wasn't done! Alright, out of the way, old lady. You, green man, take me to the Tower of Zot. And now, all of a sudden, it's sci-fi. That's one of the things that really set FF4 apart at the time. Was just, like, the weird dichotomy between fantasy and sci-fi, both in the same game. Do your two damage. And Cecil's just like, ah, don't worry, guys, I got this. Ooh, cabin. Ninja helmets. That's a good one. Ah. An endless supply of centaurs. Monster in a box! But only one monster. Eh. Another magic spell. There's that spell I sold. That that was indeed a puppy. I would not want to pet that puppy, but it was a puppy.
Swordman. goodness. No, don't dart the spoon! Those slimes are immune to everything except fire, so that's why I keep burning them. Match made in heaven. Pepe girl and sword man. I'm hoping that uh, Porum is going to learn Cure 3 here in a minute. This healing everyone for just a hundred points is not cutting it. Oh, another cabin. Good deal. Alright, Cecil. against fire. Yes, they are weak against fire. But then that happens. And you just hope that Palin doesn't use some massively magic spell. Oh! Almost made it. I kind of figured it wasn't an Epe, but, uh... Nice. Keep it with these cabins. I like it. That is not a more powerful weapon for Cecil, but it's... Yeah, it's, it's a weapon. You need something... No, who needs something on their arms? It was Sid. But that's only... That's 99, though. That's actually more powerful than I thought it was. It's actually more powerful than, uh, than that, okay. Which means now he can finally equip a shield. Yes! The percent next to the attack is basically the hit rate or the chances that you're actually going to land a hit. So at 99%, it's pretty much guaranteed that you're going to hit with that. Some of the other weapons have a lower percentage, which means they will occasionally miss.
loot all the treasure. Poison Axe! Is that better for Sid? I don't think so. 100 versus what? 95. Yeah, so in this case, for example, uh, the axe the axes hit 60% of the time, so 3 out of 5 times. Not terrible, but they will occasionally miss. This is going to be... And it doesn't matter what your... What attack power you have on these guys. Only fire. Oh, wait, I forgot to get the chest. That was actually a pretty well-balanced party for the enemy. And a magic user and physical attack. Uh-oh. You need to heal thyself. So does poor him. Cecil's almost out of MP. Yeah, that's not gonna work. That was just awful. Okay, let's see. Heal potion. who we're fighting now. Another scripted battle. At least I think it's scripted. Yes, it is, because the king will say, I will bring you down to the Hades. Oh, you gotta love Nintendo censorship in the 90s. out of two boss battles done here. We'll see Golbez, and... That's kind of ironic that, uh... That Tella is the one that, uh... We're gonna be saving here. Usually you don't save Tella right here. Usually kind of the opposite happens. But now we have another Tella. We have two Tellas now. And together they will save who? Young!
And I'll tell a funny story here once we get done. Yeah, go away, Tella. You have nothing cool. Hmm. This is tough. Yang is a better physical attacker than Edge, but he does not have magic. But Edge doesn't get all of his magic until much later in the game, too. He's not the best magic dude. I am going to go ahead and replace and take Edge's crap. So, in the original Final Fantasy IV, this ball was actually a blade. So, as a joke, the developers for Free Enterprise said, something is engraved on the side of the ball. I owe you one scythe blade. Alright, so let's equip Yang with some stuff. We'll equip him in all the ninja stuff. Well, almost all the ninja stuff. Almost none of the ninja stuff. Because it's all, like, edge-specific. So this will be interesting. Speaking of swooning, Yang might be doing that quite a bit in this fight. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it's going to be difficult keeping Young up for this fight. And there he goes. It's going to be hard keeping a lot of these characters up. I like your tubes. Dead. Ah! on it, Yang is going to miss out on that experience. Oh, and it was a lot, too. It. They all go back to Cecil's bedroom, they have a big old sleepover, and they get the pan! Which we can use underground, which I think will be our next stop. I think we're all healed up now, yep. Okay. So let me take a moment here, we'll update our tracker. Because now Yang is in the party. There's Yang. Uh, just taking a breather. We have fought Dark Knight Cecil. Light him up. We have fought the King and Queen of Eblon. We will light them up. And we just got the pan. So we'll light that up. Okay. Save there, and we will continue on. Now is about the time we should head underground. Willow's looking up at me going, Who are you talking to? There's a good weapon for Edge, although I don't have enough money for it. Best weapon for Kane is here, too. But I don't have a Kane. Because I don't have the Sand Ruby yet. I need to lighten up my inventory, though, because I'm almost full. So we'll do that.
and all of us. I have enough for the crystal sword. I'm gonna go back and get the crystal sword. Oh heck yeah. Get rid of some more stuff here real quick. Before we go underground, let me get Cecil his best weapon. It was 215 and I've got 232. Watch this, from 114 to 218! I love it! Plus I get 40,000 back on that, so hey, it was only a net cost of 170,000 gil. But totally, totally worth it. Look, lady, you are blocking the only exit to this place. even ruder. But now I can show this off. Watch this. Bam! 2100 damage. Poor Yang is only doing like 20-something damage. We have to level him up real quick. Stingrat just needled itself. Look, that was not cool. I guess we're having bacon for dinner tonight. Yang gained eight levels. So eight levels takes his HP from 300 and more than doubles it. <laughs> Charm is such a fun spell. Alright, back to what I was doing. Before I get really excited and... I think I got that far. Meh. Nothing terribly fascinating. Check the item shop. Nothing I care about. Alright. So let's do this. And actually, before I go underground, I just realized I can... I need to go to Baron and finish that. But first, let's uh, let's cause a natural disaster, why don't we? Plus, we can check the 
the gear in here. Oh, I forgot to mark the bearing key off on the tracker. Thought I was missing something. Ding! Artemis arrows. Those are the best arrows in the game. Oh, Dragoon armor. 23-8. You've got Dragoon armor. You've got ice armor, so you could use the upgrade. I do this before where I bought Dragoon Armor and then was like, wait, Cecil can't wear it even though it says Cecil can wear it? I feel like I've done that before. And I just played myself and spent 50,000 gil that I didn't have to spend. No, no, the light sword. That'll be worth some money. Diamond bracelets. I don't know if that's an upgrade or not. Uh, Cecil can't even use it. It will be an upgrade for you, though. Because I have not upgraded Horum's equipment, like, at all. And these being water monsters are all going to be lightning. Not beat out of them. Nope, oh, I'm going the wrong way. Hello. Yay, Cure 1 Potion. for Rydia if we find a Rydia. Ooh, that's a lot of monsters. Porm still has not learned Cure 3. <gasps> Adamant Armor! 
Adamant armor is fantastic, and here is why. Adamant armor can be equipped by any character, gives you 100 defense and 20 magic defense. So that is basically going to keep Young alive while he's still building up his level. I'm over this dungeon. Let's go. Oh boy. Oh no. Okay, that's not terrible. Oh, come on. point there, but I can get free healing up ahead, just past this door. This will have another sleepover in Cecil's place, yay! And all of a sudden, Two kids and three adults can fit in that tiny, tiny bed. Don't you love video game logic? Alright, we're gonna fight a boss here. The, uh... The glowy thing worries me, because that usually means it's a really powerful boss. Logopogo is a very powerful boss. Big Wave is an instant... Uh, takes away 25% of your HP, so by doing that, Logopogo has just cut our HP for the entire party in half. So hopefully Cecil with his super powerful sword will get this done quick. Otherwise, we may be in trouble, because if it does... Oh, that's not good! Okay, good. Woo! Almost everyone gets a level. Alright, let's see what kind of goodies are in here. 90, hourglass, 100, okay. Look, I... Yes, yeah, so... I guess the Final Fantasy IV crew would be, like, pro at, uh, at, at being at a con. That's almost a fanfiction in and of itself. The Final Fantasy IV crew finds themselves in an anime convention. What do? Special, especially if they happen to run into someone cosplaying as one of them. My fanfiction brain is already coming up with ideas. And there was a picture I posted in, uh, in my Discord where someone who was doing a run of Free Enterprise 
somehow managed to get three Cecils all together in the same room. Are they staffing? There's a topic for discussion. What would they staff? Like, I can tell some of them. Like, Kane would be security for sure. I assume with Cecil being, you know, having the leadership qualities in that, he'd probably be in, in leadership, like management somewhere, con chair, director or something. The kids are, the Palum and Porum, I don't know. Who am I fighting now? Oh, the Antlion! The Antlion will be much more powerful than he normally is, because this is a much later point in the game than he normally appears at. We'll see how this works out. Actually... I mean, Cecil would be good at security, too. I forget what he's weak against, so Quake usually works. There we go! Yes. So, like, for example, the Mist Dragon is, like, the first boss you fight. If you fight the Mist Dragon in a very late point in the game, like, on the moon somewhere, that is going to be a very difficult fight. Alright, who we got? Ah, Fusoya! This is the person I usually rob when he joins the party. Because I've already got two decent magic users. So we're going to dismiss him and take his ship. This is like, yay, we didn't die! And we didn't have to sacrifice two of our party members to turn in a stone! Oh, that's... That's an... Uh, a, a, eventually, that's something you have to have, is the crystal. That is the crystal that starts the final boss fight when you use it. There we go, we got the crystal! We saw Fusoya, we told Fusoya to go take a hike. We got the antlion done, we got Ogo Pogo done. That's the wide thing. Let's build it. Where's Ogo Pogo? There's Ogo Pogo. Can't you? I have to get to the final boss first. Which it. There is a way I can get to the final boss early. But I have to find something called the pass. Normally it just takes you to like a little funny thing in the game. Where basically Cecil goes to a strip show. But you know, it was the 90s. I mean, it is. What do we got here? Ice Claw. Mm. Oh, wait. Hold on. I took all of Fusoya's shit. I can give that to Pora. So that's a 36. This life one is a 48, so that's good there. Put on your robe and wizard hat. There we go. We should probably sell some stuff. That's good, that's good. Never use 
that probably... Of course, as soon as I say, yeah, probably I'm not going to run into Kane, and then Kane's going to be the, the dude that shows up here in this next thing. Actually, before I do that, let me heal up. Let's see what they got here for sale. Oh, that's a good thing. That reminds me. Let's give someone 10 extra MP. How about... Battle. Let's see what we get. <laughs> everyone just, everyone just always fits into the one bed. Oh, the dark elf. Ninety-nine, ninety-nine. Holy crap! Oh, what is he weak against? I don't know. So, virus, sure. Yangin, three levels. Nice. Cure 3, finally! We have another boss battle to go through. Let's see who it is. Oh. Those shiny sparks I, I worry about. Let's see. Rydia! Oh! I want Rydia, but I'm not going to put her in here because we're about to fight a boss, and if I do, she's going to get absolutely annihilated because she's only got like 30 HP. So I will tell her to go take a hike, but I will come back for her once I'm done here. Oh, especially because that's a boss you normally fight on the moon. And they're weak against Hulk. Uh oh. Okay, good. Ah, I can't really use magic on him. Maybe that won't bounce back. Good lord! Oh no! Well, bye, Palum. That did not work like I wanted it to. Disembodied hand. 
Another source of nightmare fuel for me as a child was watching this whole thing happen. key item. Let's see what the key item is. Pink tail! Okay. That can be traded in for a pretty powerful item. So let's update our tracker. Let's see. We got the pink tail. Rydia is chillin' in Mesidia. We just fought... Okay, Dark Elf and the Lunar Dragons. And I think that's it. Yep. Okay. on the little button there to take me back up. Oops. I missed Mysidia. So there's Rydia. She grew up in like 30 seconds. And we are going to replace Palum, especially because he's dead. And yeah, sure. Alright, let's get you... have any arrows. That's not good. Alright, poor Rydia is going to need some stuff. But also... She can learn some pretty powerful summons right off the bat, like Leviathan. I think I had an Ashura. Yep. And Self. Don't you wish it was that easy to learn stuff? You just have an orb in your pocket and you just look at it and you go, oh, now I know how to summon this mythical creature. Let's stand. on what summons. Like, summoning Bahamut, which basically is like Mega Flare, which is kind of like, you know, here, let's have the effects of a nuclear bomb on this one creature. 
That would be kind of scary. Alright. Let's see if this backfires. I'm gonna grind a little bit and try and get Rydia up to par. Oh, this- that's bad. That's bad. Run away. Okay, that's- that's a fair point. Okay, let's try this one a little bit better. Oh no! Rydia just got eviscerated. Who did I just cast Cure 2 on? Good job. Ugh. Quorum, you had one job. <laughs> it just petrified itself. Okay. For any sake, I'm running out of life potions. There we go. Fifteen levels, that's what I like to see. Start. I'm gonna go over to another spot real quick. Because Rydia will learn a spell here. Blow up the ice. Now we'll go to the other side of the mountain. See if we have a character here that might be useful. So Rydia is looking quite jaundiced. I should probably uh, deal with that. Edward! Hey, buddy! Now who do I get rid of? Uh, you know what, let's get rid of Sid. Yes, I know what I'm doing. I think. Good thing I cast that shell, that basically reduces magic damage, otherwise Edward would have been a crispy critter. But now he just gained 11 levels. And I'm gonna do the most awesome thing ever. BAM! 255 attack. And 
Yeah, that's a thing that Edward does, is that he just hides when his HP is low. But at least he still gains a level. Shuriken, that's... Just exit. And take the adamant off Yang and put it on Edward to make him, like, really super powerful now. Left before the stream's over. What do I want to do? Uh, let's go back underground. Actually, no. Where should I go next? Oh, I know. Okay. I got it. I got it. Let's go to the Antlion Cave and see if there's actually a Sand Ruby there. I mean, we can pick up Kane. Now, the enemies in this dungeon are really super weak, so just to save time, I'm going to turn the in random encounters off. And go treasure hunting! 250. Oh, the white spear. Holy spear. That is Kane's best weapon. So now I really hope there's a sand ruby. In here. do I have right now? Oh, okay. I'm fine on guild. There's another 3,000. Hermes sandals. Ninja Sword. There's stuff in here. Yes. It's not the power glove, but it's the power... I don't want to put that there. I'll put that there. It's the power robe. Nice little upgrade for our monk. But yes, turning random encounters off is a function of the randomizer. It'd be kind of interesting, though, if you turned random encounters off in the regular game, would it, made it make it easier or more difficult? Because you wouldn't really be able to level up all that much. That was some food for thought. Who are we going up against? Oh! Speaking of Bahamut, there he is. There he is. And Edward, one of the weakest characters in the game, just one hit knocked him out. You also do get Gil in random encounters. And you don't always get gill from boss fights, so... Ah, the package! Before we go, let's go burn a village down. I did just spoon the hallowed father of all Eidolans to death. The randomizer also randomizes whatever sprite comes out of this package.
So instead of burning the village down, it looks like I'm going to just cut it open with a bunch of ninja swords. Now here's another Tella. Ha ha! Edward gets to knock him back! Except Edward now, or except Tella now apparently knows how to summon monsters. That I think was the most satisfying thing I have ever done is have Edward attack Tella with the damn spoon. I am happy. This whole this whole randomized run was worth it just for that. We got the package. We've used the package. We've used the Baron key. We've used the magma key. We've used the spoon. We've used the earth crystal. And let's see here. Just fought Bahamut. And I think we are up to date now. Not that that's going to matter here in a couple of minutes, but... See, this is normally what happens is now you can't get to the town. Except we have the airship, so... Screw you, plot! I do what I want. Alright. go adventuring here for just a moment. Let's see what's in this little town. This is always a fun little town because all the people are either tiny people, frogs, or pigs, and there's some hidden junk. Like a nice shield. I think that's a better shield than what Cecil has now. More magic defense. Another shuriken. Which is money. Anything up here? No. Meh. Meh. Really, I can pretty much stop looking for stuff in shops. Except for that. And that! Okay. I mean, it cost a pretty penny, but it's worth it. Because any character can equip it, so I could probably farm for some money if we continue this particular seed, which I think we will, because this seems to be a pretty, pretty fun seed. But at least for Cecil right now, the crystal armor is definitely going to be an upgrade from what he's got now. Well, bam. He is even more of a beast than he already was. But for now, we are getting close to time, so we will, uh... I will for sure... I will for sure save this. And do an emulator save, too, just to make sure we're all good. And uh, this is where we will end for the evening. Thank you all so much for being here. I hope you can join me tomorrow, because tomorrow is going to be a really cool treat. We are going to be doing Gundam Wing Endless Duel. I have decided that I am going to take up the controls of my favorite Gundam, Sandrock, and see what I can do against all the other Gundams and all the other important mobile suits in the Gundam Wing series. And uh, we'll be doing that for a bit, and we'll probably throw some Jackbox in there too, because it is a four-hour stream in celebration of Labor Day, because, you know, what better way to not work than to be on the internet and play games? You know? So, hope you can join me tomorrow for that. Uh, my uh, friend Karu is going to be guest commentating. Uh, Karu is, uh, is someone who is very, very, very very, very knowledgeable 
about the Gundam Wing universe, like super knowledgeable. Karu is the subject matter expert on uh, uh, one particular hero, Yui, and I'm sure we'll have all kinds of tidbits of knowledge and, and trivia to share with you during our time together tomorrow. Hope you can join us then. Until then, this is Dusty saying thanks for joining us. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.